All right, let's do a mail call and then I'll show you what I've been working on. Everything in here is for that project, for what I've been working on. So, right off. Grave Tatan. 6466 six, six, Death Toucher. There we go. When he comes into Battlefield or Attacks, I get two black zombie tokens. Two, two, two black zombie tokens. Seal uh I meant to order a foil. I made a mistake. I meant to order a foil, but I didn't. Anyway, Seal of Cleansing. So, it's a disenchant that sits there. Does it sacrifice a destroy target artifact or enchantment? With what I've been working on, I put a card in that uh, it's a black and white deck, which you can probably tell by seeing Grave Titan, Seal of Cleansing, and me saying that it's for the thing I've been working on. I can get it back. I can get it back, so it's repeatable. Open the graves. Five, three, black, black, for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature control dies, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. It was a night like any other. It would soon become a night no one would ever forget. Yeah. Dictate of Hilliard. <clears throat> Three, wait, wait, for a flashy enchantment. My creatures get plus two, plus two. My opponent's creatures get shit. Hilliard, god of the sun. Uh, okay, so three and a white for a five-six god. I don't know if I like this art. I still coming to terms that I like the other art, but this one was a lot cheaper, so I bought it. Um, got it from LGS. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it'll grow on me. It's it's kind of cool. I like having different art for different decks. So anyway, this bastard. If my devotion to white is less than five, he's not a creature. My other creature is Vigilance, and he's really in here because two white white create a two one white cleric enchantment creature token. So the deck I'm building is uh, clerics and tokens, clerical tokens. So he feeds in. I should have an Erebos too for balance, but I don't know if I want to get an Erebos. Um, if he did not make the tokens, I probably would not have this Heliod, but he does, so I do. I'm not sure if I like this. The art is kind of indistinct. In bright light, it's even worse. So right here, it's you can kind of see it. So it's just uh, black-white pain land. Decided I want a different art. On, uh, on the website, it looked a lot better. This looks a bit washed out. Um, a bit faded. The art isn't that sharp. It isn't that bright. But eh, I paid for it. I'll keep it. Temple of Silence. Shh, quiet. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. Great pact. I'm actually so Edgar Markov has a dictate of Erebus. For balance, I'm going to give Edgar this grave pact. And I'm going to uh, take away his Dictate of Erebos for this deck. So, Dictate of Helia, Dictate of Erebos, there's balance in that. Which will probably push me even harder to get an Erebos for the deck. Yeah, I like balance. I'm a completionist. So, this is kind of cool. This is that alternate art Grave Pact. One of them, they came out with, what, 20 of them last year? So, yeah, I like it. There's uh, another one. I can't quite remember what it looked like, but I know I liked it. But this one is the cheapest, so I got the cheapest one. Because I want to build this deck. I want to build it and play it and smash my opponents and watch them cry. Arcane Signet. So this is the cheapest foil alternate Ar Arcane Signet, so I got it. Kind of fits the theme of the deck. It kind of looks like something that uh, the commander would have on her hand. So, I got it. Isolated Chapel. Again, I want a different art. I don't have this uh, Dominaria art. It's kind of cool. I actually, I'm pretty happy with this. <coughs> Excuse me. The non-retro frame, the Isolated Chapel, is the art is a bit wider. So, the Isolated Chapel is a bit more away from the viewer. And I got this one, even though it looks more isolated in the non-retro frame. I just liked how this is kind of a close-up of it. And it's still, you know, 
drives the point home that that chapel is off by itself somewhere. There ain't nobody around it. Kind of like Mont Saint Michel. Talisman of hierarchy. So, Payne Signet. Because you'll never get to the top if you don't know who's already there. Shiny. Yeah? Potatoes are done. Okay. I'll be in a minute. Look, I Sit. Have to get so. So I got this uh, soul ring. Um, I still don't like this. I still don't like the colorless symbol. I still like the two in a circle, like revised, like the Commander 2013. I like that better. But yeah, I decided to get a foil one. I actually have three more foil ones coming in. So I ordered three copies of the Sheldon Maneri uh, Secret Lair, and right now they're in Montana. And my friend is going to bring them over in January. So <laughs> it'll be almost a year from the time I ordered them before I get them. But when that comes in, I'll probably put one of the Sheldon Maneri uh, soul rings in this deck. And Teferi's Protection. This will get a Teferi's Protection. I'm not going to show you the last card yet. Maybe you already saw enough of it. You know what it is. Weathered Wayfarer. So one of the different arts for Weathered Wayfarer. This, actually the other one, the one where it's got the Wayfarer and he's pulling on a coilos, pulling on some kind of cow. It doesn't really look like a weathered wafer to me. It looks like some kind of herder, some kind of uh, cowboy, cow puncher. This guy, he looks like a weathered wafer. He looks like he's seen some shit. So anyway, this human clerical nomad. One wait for a one one. One tap, search a lever for land, any land. Reveal it. Put it in your hand, then shuffle. Only if an opponent controls more lands. You so have to stay behind my opponents. For him to work, I have to stay behind my opponent, at least one of them. I have to stay behind them one land. Uh, not sure if I want to put something in to sacrifice land so I can do that. Still working out the deck, still working out the particulars, but this guy is he's pretty cool. He fits the theme, he's a cleric, he does some cool stuff. He can find any land now. For the best card I got from my last trip to the LDS. Scope clamp. I wanted this for about six or eight months. This is the alternate art, Secret Lair Skull Clamp, and it's pretty. I like it. I like it a lot. I do not like the skull clamp. The so the original skull clamp from Dark Steel. I like that. That's pretty cool. The one that came after that. Where it's some bold guy with a clamp on the back of his head looks like a lobot. I don't like that one at all. No, I don't like that art. So when I saw this, I thought, yeah, next time I get a skull clamp, I'm getting this one. So I did. One for an one to equip in equipment. Equip creature gets plus one neg one. Whenever it dies, you draw two cards. So that's what I got from the LGS. So let me show you what they're going in. Let me show you what I'm working on. I've been rebuilding Tesa tokens. So the commander is Tesa Ors of, Ors of Scion. One, one black, one white for two, three human advisor. Not a cleric, but eh. She's pretty cool. I used to have Tesa a long time ago, and I'll make a video where I show why she quit working. Basically, she quit working because I was too much of a slave to the theme. And I put in too many clerics that really didn't do enough. Really weren't that impressive. Um, and the deck kind of fell on its face. So I'm hoping the rebuild works a lot better. The rebuild, I'm not as much of a slave to the theme. So I'll check it out. Anyway, what does she do? I can sack three white creatures. Exile target creature from the game. Whenever another black creature I control dies, I get a 1-1 white creature, a spirit token of flying. So, the th one of the themes is black-white. So she's the commander. Let's see if she'll stand up. Will you stand up, Tesa? Oh, she's standing up, but you can't see her. Can I put her where you can see her and she'll stand up? Probably not. Okay, just lay there, Tesa. So, it's cleric, clerics and tokens. That doesn't help at all. Oh, fuck. So with tokens, I've got the City of Shadows. I've had it for a long time because I like the art. I think it's a beautiful card. I like looking at it. 
but I never wanted to use it because I don't like exiling my creatures. But if I exile a token, yeah, who cares? They're going to get exiled when they die anyway. More or less, right? So tap, sacrifice one of your creatures, but exile it. Put a counter in City of Shadows. Tap City of Shadows to add X colorless mana to your mana pool for X number of, number of counters it has. So, if if I get this up to four, maybe even five, and I can tap it for five colors, that's pretty goddamn good. I'll test it out. If my opponents just blow it up or they take off the counters with some different effects or do some bullshit, I'll take it out and put something more reliable. But in the meantime, I'll, I'll give it a go. Okay, Fetid Heath, just the filter land for black white. Add colors to mana pool, or if you spend white or black, you can get any combination of two white, two black, black and blue, you know. You can see the card, right? That's what it does. Ghost Quarter. So, it makes a lot of spirits. So, Ghost Quarter kind of fits the, uh, the theme. So, I can add, tap it for one, or I can tap it to sacrifice it and blow up somebody's land, and they get to go find a basic land. Anyway. It's not really in here for that. It's in here because it fits the theme of the deck. And I like the art. So, there we go. Got the shrine. Took this out of my modern collection. This foil one. Um, it's just the black white shock land. It does what it does, says what it does. Black white fetch land does what it does, says what it does. Black white. Sack to draw a card land. Whatever the hell we're calling these. I don't know. I don't know what the shorthand is for it. Anyway, so if I tap it for mana, I hurt myself. If I tap it to draw a card, I don't hurt myself. Hmm. Something I don't have for Tace yet is an Urborg. I want to get her an Urborg and a Cabal Coffers. Because if you have Urborg, you might as well get Cabal Coffers. And the main reason I have Urborg is for lands like this, tap to add one colorless. With Urborg out, of course I can tap this to add black, so it becomes a swamp, so it becomes more useful. So Starlet Sanctum, white, sacrifice cleric, I gain life equal to its toughness. Black, sac cleric, target player loses life equal to its power. So it is kind of a on theme, weird little card. Temple of the False God. So her mana base isn't uh, really set. I really want to get her a Nykthos, Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth, Cabal Coffers. I've got a Fountain Port coming in. Fountain Port is a new card from Bloomborough, where you can tap it for one, or you can spend two, I think it is tap it, sacrifice token, draw a card. Uh, four tap, you get a fish, like I care about that. And then it's got some other ability that I forget what it is. Mainly it's two. Sacrifice a token to draw a card. That's really what it's there for. Okay, so that's the mana base that I've got so far, plus the cards I showed you from the uh, mail call. So, when I first had Tesa, I used the Ravnica lands because she's from Ravnica. And then I was going to use Revias lands, but then I remembered that uh, Lorwyn had uh, the Bitech for enemy colors. I think that for allied for all colors. There's ten different pairings of land. So I decided to put the Lorwyn land. That's just so peaceful. That's just idyllic. I mean you look at that and it looks like a place where you can just go and relax. Nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, you can just drink a beer by the swamp. Go hang out in the plains, do whatever you do in the plains, fly kite I guess. So these are the basic lands I've got for it. Anyway, that's the mana base that I've got so far. And the other cards I want to get, I mean, it's going to take a while because they're pretty expensive. Um, Nyctos is what, 30 euros. Cabal Coffers, 20 euros. Uh, Urborg to Miagmoth, 30, 40 euros. So, yeah, <laughs> it adds up. <clears throat> Alright, something I thought I would try, 
This is the Maskwood Nexus I bought for Voya that I decided not to use for Voya because Voya is pretty goddamn good as, as he is. And I thought I'd stick it in here. And you'll see why. So my creatures are every creature type. Which, I have a Spirit Bonds coming in and Spirit Bond says whenever a non-token creature it's either cast or comes into play, one of the two. You can spend one white and you get a 1-1 one, one flying spirit token. You can also spend one colorless, one white, sacrifice a spirit, and give target non-spirit creature indestructible until end of turn. Well, if my creature is ever creature type, then I can't use that part of it, can I? So, I don't know if I use the spirit bonus when it comes in. Which always happens. Whenever I make a deck, I always get some cards that don't quite work with other cards, and I need to make cuts because I get too many cards, but anyway. These are the cards that I had in my collection already. Orzo Signet, this used to be in Sharum, along with the Azorus and Demir Signet from the same uh, edition. And I took them out, uh, took them out because it seemed kind of superfluous. I forget what I put in. Oh, I gave her a Star Compass for one. So she didn't need these and they're just sitting in my art binder. Elspeth Tyrell. Gain one life for each creature control, or put three 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens on the battlefield and the taste it is in. So I can neck two Elspeth and basically exile a creature. I get three 1-1 one, one white creatures, sacrifice those three creatures, and exile a creature from the game. Profit. I just lay there. Okay. Kaya, Geist Hunter. One black white for a three loyalty planeswalker. Uh, yeah, plus one creature token death touch on turn. Uh, one of my creatures gets plus one. Who cares? The death touch. Now that's pretty good. But really, what she's in here for is neg two until end of turn. If one or more tokens would be created under my control, I get twice as many instead. So she's kind of like an anointed procession, which I have, but I'm thinking of not using because it doesn't do anything else. She does other things. Neg six. What is her neg six? I never really paid attention. Exile a card from all graveyards. Now, that kind of sucks if I have stuff in my graveyard. Then create a one one white spirit creature token flying for each card. Each card. Egg. Ooh. Each card, not creature. Each card exiled. Wow. Ooh. Wow. That's. Mm, that's spicy. Okay, Ghost Assassin. Um, probably going to take her out. So, two black white for five loyalty planeswalker. I can exile her or up to one target creature, and then whatever exiled comes back onto the on the battlefield under my control, and I lose two life. Or I can neg one. Each one it loses two, and I gain two. Or I can neg two. Each one it discards, and I draw a card. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of creatures that comes into play abilities. So, really, she'd be in here more for the uh, the draw, but I don't think it's really worth it. I don't think she's worth a slot if she's not really doing that much. Okay, Cleric, so they need a god. Well, here's one of the gods. Heliod is the other god. I don't have Erebos, like I said. Athreel's god of passage. I've had him for a long time. And I've not put him in any decks. He can't go in Ikridishidiki Shadar Kondo because his toughness is lower than his power. Uh, he doesn't go in Shroom because he's not an artifact. He doesn't go in Edgar Markov because he's not a vampire. He doesn't go in Kirador because he's not a... So I've had this foil Athros since about the time this set came out. I've just never used him because he didn't fit any of the themes of any deck with black and white. But now he does. So he's indestructible. And my devotion has to be seven. Whenever another creature own dies, own. So if somebody has taken control of one of my creatures and it dies, I get it back unless they pay three life. Somebody pays three life. I target somebody. You pay three life. Or you got my creature. Do you pay? Do you pay? You son of a bitch, you paid? Oh, you bastard. I wanted that creature back. Eight and a half tails. White, white for a two, two, fox cleric. Target permanent control gains protection white until end of turn. 
target spell or permanent becomes white. So for three, I can make something white, give whatever I want protection from white. So it can block and survive, or it can punch through. So it can't be blocked. Well, depending on what they have. I mean, if they're playing a multicolor deck, pretty much everybody is. Um, I'd have to turn all the potential blockers white, unless they're already white. So I'm just playing a white red deck, then uh, I just have to turn the red stuff white and give my creature protection. Hmm, choices. Alright, so as I said with Tesa, I'm not being a slave to the theme. So he's not a cleric, he doesn't generate any tokens, she. I mean, she's just a kitty cat. Nightmare kitty cat, four glowing eyes, but one black white hybrid. Three, two. I'm not playing her as a companion, I'm just pay playing her as a card in the deck. Lifelink. During each of my turns, I can cast a permanent with CMC two or less from my graveyard. So if I've got that um, seal of cleansing and I sacrifice it, destroy an artifact or enchantment, Luris lets me cast it uh, to do it again. That's one way of repeating it. I forget who it was. Uh, man, I should probably read my comments before I do this. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. But somebody recommended Aura. Aura as a cleric commander. And it's a good idea, except I wanted to rebuild Tesa. I wanted more tokens and options. I just wanted to do some different stuff. So I don't have any aura here, four for three three life linking clerical core. Whenever he or another cleric control dies, I can turn a cleric with lesser CMC from a graveyard to the battlefield. So I can bring things back. Obviously there's good reasons why he was recommended as a commander, but um, this is not what I'm doing right now. Maybe I'll change my mind. I'll see. Orum, Semite Healer. I'll probably take her out. I don't, I don't know if preventing three damage any creature players, were, but I love the art. Oh, I love, like this card. It's Kai Foglio. Uh, don't really want to take it out, but I don't know if she's really worth a slot with what she does. Uh, I'll have to see. And she only counts as a, she's not a cleric. She only counts as a cleric. <laughs> so one white white for one three. Legendary Cleric. Tap, prevent 3 damage to any creature or player. Okay, Ravo Soul Thunder, another Cleric. 5. Flying. My other creature get plus 1, plus 1. So he stays a 2-2, two, two, but he's flying over the battlefield looking cool. Looking hip, I mean, look at him. He's just like, dude, I'm chilling out in the sky. What are you doing down there on the ground? You ground-pounding son of a bitch. Don't you wish you could fly like me and be cool and have a big stick to beat people with? Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Fly around, have a big stick, smack people upside the head. So my other creature get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of my upkeep, I may, and if there's something dead, I probably will, return a creature from a graveyard to my hand. So if you paid the three life, I'm getting it back anyway. Screw you. Probably going to take him out. Eh, it feels too much like cheating. That's why I've had this for a long, long time, too. Um, I think I'd had a deck once, but with the commander rules, you start at 40 life. So if I start at 40, and I cast him before I go down to 30, before people beat me, then uh, you flip him over, and he becomes an enchantment, prevent all damage to creatures you control. Mm, you know, it feels like cheating, but that is the commander rules. That is the way this card works. So I'll see. Maybe I'll take him out, maybe I won't. Anyway, he's not a cleric, he's a monk. So that's another reason to take him out. Unless I've got Mask with Nexus, then he's everything. Tesa Karlov, so the other Tesa. So four, for two four, human advisor. In the beginning, human advisor, not a cleric. If creature dying causes a triggered ability of permanent eye control to trigger, it triggers again. So if I have Dictative Erebos and something dies, Dictative Erebos triggers again. So they sacrifice two for every one of mine. 
I don't have that many dying effects. I don't have that many things that triggered ability when something dies in this deck. But she does give my creature tokens vigilance and lifelink, so she does have added utility. So she'll stay. Thalise, Reverend Medium. Five for three, four cleric. So she's on theme. She's a cleric. The beginning of each instep, each of them. So if I can make spirits tokens, if I can do shit on my opponent's turn, I get more tokens as she's out for every turn, which is pretty damn cool. And they're uh, they're white. Be cool if they're black and white, and you'll see why in a, in a moment. First it goes to the legendaries, and it goes to everything else. Whisper, blood liturgist. So Whisper here, he's a cleric, she's a cleric, it's a cleric. Three and a black for a 2-2. Two, two. Sack two creatures, return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield. So, a lot of bring stuff back. Oriac Champion, she's a cleric. White, white for 1-1, one, one. protection from black and red. Whenever another creature comes to play, I will gain one life. Like I said, uh, theme is kind of black and white, so I'm not a slave to the spirit and token theme like I used to be. I'm putting in more things that are fun. This guy is fun. I like him. Edgar has one, so now Tace has one. Three black white for a four four life link protection for white and black. As long as I have 30 more life and and an opponent's 10 or less, he gets plus six plus six and flying. So I have to meet. Both of those conditions, I have to beat the shit out of somebody and knock them down below 10. Well, not getting knocked down myself too hard. Kind of tricky, but I'll see if I can pull it off. Bygone Bishop. He's a spirit cleric. Tune away for 2-3. Whenever I cast creature spells, CMC 3 or less, I get a clue. And I can eat the clues and draw cards. Clarion Spirit. So whenever I cast my second spell each turn, not a whole lot of instants here, so I'm not going to be triggering this guy on my opponent's turn, really. But he makes more spirit tokens. And he comes down early. So that's why he's in here. Plus he looks cool. Alright, since black and white is kind of one of the themes, how about Deathbringer Leech? Five for a three, four horror. My the white creatures get plus one plus one, my the black creatures get plus one plus one, my black and white creatures get plus two plus two. Never play a white spell, I can tap a creature. Never play a black spell, I can destroy a creature if it's tapped. So if I play a black and white spell, I can just destroy something. Just get it. Die. So I pulled her out of my collection. Probably going she's uh, she's not gonna make the final cut. Um there's just too many, uh, like, Rattling Reanimators coming in. Rattling Reanimator is more on theme with this deck than she is. And he would, uh, he's got a death trigger. When a creature, another cleric, or he dies, I get a 2 2 zombie token. So if I have the other Tesa, so I have Tesa or, um, Tesa Karlov, then if a cleric dies, I get two zombie tokens with the Rattling Reanimator. And her, Okay, so she's a cheap flyer, she's a cleric, so she's on theme there. But, okay, at the beginning of upkeep, each opponent loses one life, I gain one life. If it was, you gain life equal to the amount of life lost this way, if I said many times, and I'll probably say many more, she would be more interesting, but she doesn't say that, so she's not. The art is really cool. I like looking at her. She looks sexy and deadly at the same time, so that's always a bonus, and she flies. But she's probably not going to make the final cut. He is Edgewalker. One, black white for two two cleric. So he makes my clerics cost less colored mana, which is highly unusual. Um, normally it reduces colorless. He reduces the colored. So if I have Oreg Champion, she would cost one white, not white white. Um, if I want to cast, oh, Aura, he would cost two colorless. And my camera's going to die, so 
we're going to have a part two. All right, part two. Although I really shouldn't call it a part two, should I? Because I'm just going to splice them together and make one part. So, they're not really going to be part two. This is it. This is all you get. All right. I left off with the Mary Angel. So, two and a white white for a three three angel. Whenever I get a land into play, I get a one one white bird creature token. Um, it's kind of random. Probably not going to get that many birds from playing that many lands because it is not a landfall deck. Uh, I already have soldiers, spirits, zombie tokens. So another random bird. Uh, probably, probably not much point. I mean, the art is cool. Um, the art is fantastic. I like the card. Uh, her stats aren't bad. Three three flyer for four flyer, but she'll probably come out. Let's keep going. Frontline medic. She got a foil one of these guys, shouldn't I? Two and a white for a three three cleric. Battalion. So whenever he and at least two other creatures attack, which in token deck should be that damn hard, creatures I control are indestructible this turn. And I can sack him, counter target spell with X and mana cost, unless the controller pays three. I guarantee somebody will forget. I guarantee at least once somebody will cast something in the X and the mana cost, and I'll say I right, sacrifice frontline cleric. Oh, I only have two mana open. Sucks to be you. You should have looked at my board. Geist, Honored Monk. Okay, she's a monk. She's not a cleric. But can I pull this back a bit? Get more. There, that's better. All right. So three white white for an XX human monk. Is she pretty? What is that? That's a Geist, Honored Monk. If you could read, I like keep telling you. Why are those, all those skeletons there? Or she makes spirits. So her power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures I control. And when she comes into play, I get two 1-1 one, one spirit creature tokens with flying. Okay. So she makes two spirits with her. And after this, can we please play um, the princess? I mean, yeah, civilization. Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, depends on your mother. But the longer this takes, that's the great merchant of Asphodel. He's a zombie. Zombie. He costs five. Zombie. But he's a 2-4, and when he comes into play, my opponents lose X life, or X is my devotion to black. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I gain life equal to the life lost this way. Which is good, which is the way it should read. It should read you gain life equal to the life. Why did you... Okay, pick those, those up carefully. Learn not to mess with things that are not yours. And to keep just, and put them in the yeah, and you were messing with something that wasn't yours. Put them in the same order. They're in alphabetical order. Master Apothecary, triple white for a two-two cleric. Tap an untapped cleric you control. Prevent the next two damage. We dealt target creature player this turn. So he's kind of like patron wizard, only for clerics. And if I've got mask with nexus and a bunch of creatures and they're all clerics, I can prevent a lot of damage. Whether or not that's going to be good is debatable, but he is cool looking, isn't he? Tree Snail Snart. Mother of Rune, she's a cleric. One for a 1 1 mama. So, mama protects target creature, gains protection color of your choice till end of turn. Oh, I need a sip of beer in this minute. Ah, yeah, that's the stuff. I hope they're in the same. That, that's not the order they were in. Mm. They're in alphabetical order. What does that mean? That means oh, C. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And be careful because some of those are foil, so don't scratch them. And next time, be more careful. So that's Mother Rins. Scholar Vathrios. So remember, City of Shadows. If I make a lot of mana with City of Shadows, and I've got few sources of black, then each opponent loses one life for each time I spend that, two and a black, each opponent loses one life. You gain life equal to the life loss this way, not you gain one life. So if I've got three opponents, each of them loses one life, I gain three life. 
I like that. That's better wording. None of this. You gain one life. Bullshit. Fuck that. And she's a 1-4, so not too bad. Deathbringer leeches out. She'll be a 2-5, which... Eh. Not great, but... Better than nothing. Sin Collector. I'm not sure if I'm going to put him in for... Possibility that he'll be dead and somebody will reanimate him and use him against me. But I don't have that many issues or sorcery, so I probably shouldn't worry about it. So, anyway, one one black, one white for 2 1. If I have Deathbring and Liege, he's a 4 3. Yeah. And if I have Deathbring and Liege in play before he is in play, when he comes to play, I get to kill something. <laughs> anyway. When he comes into play, target opponent shows me their hand. Um, they show everybody their hand. Target opponent shows everybody their hand. And they choose an instant or sorcery card and exile it. Stall your visionary. He's a cleric. One white white for two two cleric with shadow. When he damages anyone, I get to destroy target enchantment that the player controls. So I have to go after the player that has the enchantment I want to destroy. I can't hit somebody and then blow up somebody else's enchantment. It has to be the same dude. But since nobody plays Shadow, he's not he's essentially unblockable. I mean the only person that really plays any shadow creatures is Ramon in his uh black blue horror tribal deck. Thank you. That's that's pretty close, I'll fix it. Okay. C comes before M. And T comes after S. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, you did it. Well, yes, I did it wrong. Wait. Just leave it. I'll fix it. Just leave it. Leave it. Leave it. I will fix it. Okay. Sorry. And be more careful. I know it's fine. You just need to be more careful. Okay. Go be careful. Remember the Grave Titan? Here's his buddy, the Sun Titan. Look at him. That's the Sun Titan. Yeah, so you're going to finish this? Yep. Deck, and then we can play. Yep. Yay. What are we going to play? Um, Civilization. Okay. Because I really like that game. With Koopy? Yeah. Yep. Koopy. And we're in a good position. Um, okay, good. We probably need to build a couple of quad dreams so we have some ships to protect our uh, yeah. our cities because they're on the coast. And then we also need some farm thing now. Yeah, we'll see when and we start also it. we need to settle in that place how I found the bananas and the minerals or anything. Yep. Everything. It, there's a lot of places to settle. So. We need to go there. Yep. There's the volcano. So. Well, if we build a campus there, we get extra science points because the scientists like it's looking at the volcano. That's where the science center is. Oh. That's where researchers and scientists go so they can mm -hmm. look at the volcano and get burnt. <laughs> Or fall in it and have a nice warm bath. Yep. The last bath they'll ever take. Yep. So anyway, the Sun Titan, you've been looking at it for five minutes. True Believer. Okay, another Cleric. White, white for 2-2. Two, two. I have Shroud. I can't be the target spells or abilities. Ha ha. Veteran Bodyguard. Actually, I got the sign myself by uh, Douglas Schuler. He was at an event years ago I was at in uh, Washington. So I saw him sign that for me. Three, white, white for two, five. Unless he's tapped, any damage done to me by unblocked creatures is done to him. I can prevent it, but I can't take the damage. So as long as he's untapped, he'll take all the damage for me. Got different ways to uh, stop the damage, but you'll see. The Scope of Confessor. Three, black, white for a one, three, extorting cleric. So when he comes into play, pay any amount of life, target opponent reveals as many cards from their hand, I choose one and exile it. So it stops a problem before it becomes a problem. Withered Wretch. Black, black. One, remove target card to graveyard from the game. Two, two, zombie. So he goes with the zombie theme. He goes with the cleric theme. He goes with the, uh, you're not coming, bringing that back to mess with me theme. So nice. Remember Dolores of the Dream Den? Angelic Renewal. So, one in a white. Two CMC permanent. If any creature is put in a grave for play, I can sacrifice Angelic Renewal to put them back into play. One creature. 
So if I've got Luris out, I can recast this and repeat it. So that's one of the things there. Anointed Procession. Three and a white. If an effect create one or more tokens under my troll, it doubles those tokens instead. I'm probably going to take this out. I don't think I need it. It doesn't do anything else. It's very good in the deck. I recognize its power. I recognize how uh, strong it is. But um, it doesn't do anything else. <laughs> I've got so many cards put in this deck that I've got to cut something. Here's... Let me just put this with this other card. Because they kind of fill the same space. I'm not sure if I'm going to have one of these or both of these. So, Fanatical Devotion. Two colors and a white. Sacrifice creature, regenerate target creature. Okay. And then I've got Martyr's Cause. Two colors and a white. Sacrifice creature, prevent all damage to a creature or player from one source. So, if I've got Martyr's Cause, it'll prevent damage. It's shiny. Well, yeah, like they're both this. shiny. I just really like it. It's like rainbow. -y. Well, I like it too. That's why I have them. The veteran bodyguard, if I have him in play with fanatical devotion, I can sacrifice one creature and regenerate him, and he will take all the damage that I would take by unblocked creatures. So I'm still up in the air about which of these or both of these I'll actually put in the final deck. Let me know what you think in the comments. That's what they're for. Field of Souls. Two and a white, white. The wording is updated, so I'll say the new wording. Whenever a non-token creature is dies to put your grave in play, put an essence token to play. The essence token is a 1-1 one, one spirit creature with flying. It's a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature with flying, so it now has a creature type. I just, I've got the old version. I want to play the old version, so this one doesn't say spirit. The new one says spirit, though. Land tax. The beginning of your peep Promote trolls more lands. See, like the Weather Wayfarer, I need to figure out how to stay one step behind at least one of my opponents. If they're playing some kind of ramp deck, not too hard. If they're not, then I need to figure out some way of sacrificing a land. Uh, what does Max want? So, opponent trolls more lands than I do. I can go find up to three basics, show them off, and put them in my hand, and then shuffle. I don't want Max. I, I'm... You, you know I'm doing something. Yeah. Entertain him. Pet him. Kiss yeah, him. Kiss Rub him. his belly. Necromancer's Covenant. Three black, black, white. When it comes to play, exile all creature cards in target player's graveyard from the game. Then put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token into play for each card to move this way. Zombies control life lifelink. So, does multiple things. Exiles creatures from his graveyard before they can get them back and create more problems for me. It creates zombie tokens. And it gives all my zombies lifelink. Win, win, win. Smothering ties. So three and white. Never an opponent draws a card, they may pay two. If they refuse, I get a treasure token. So I hope they refuse. Darkness. This is Black Fog. Creature stack block is normal, but no damage is dealt. Eerie Interlude. I don't have that... Furious protection yet because they're in Montana. So I've been putting more of these effects in my white decks. Um, I found them to be very useful. It doesn't do anything for the tokens, yes. The tokens are going to die because I exile them, they're gone, so doesn't matter. Let's say somebody wraths of God. I can save all my non-token creatures. Exile them, and they come back in the battlefield under my control at the beginning of the next end step. All for the low cost of two colors and one white. Instantly. There's white fog, so I've got black fog, I've got white fog, I've got fog fog. No damage. Do you got any pink fog? There is no pink in magic. Mortify. One black white, star target a creature and jam it. Instantly. And it says it's got ores of on it, so that it goes in this deck. Why is she all sort of Because she's being mortified, she's being exiled, destroyed, she's going away. But why? It's just a card. It's just the way it works. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Okay. Because the camera, the battery's going to die. No. Zelda's Persecution. Black, white, until in turn, my creature get plus one, plus one. My opponent's creature get neg one, neg one. So yep, and she's going to kill them. But oh. they're already dead. Well, she's going to kill them again. She's going to 
kill kill them. They've only been killed. She's going to kill kill them. More Look at all these zombies. There's 13 zombies in there. Because this costs 5. And I get 13 two, two black zombie creatures tapped. And I can flash it back for 10. And I can do it again. I can get 26 zombies if I have enough mana. That's a lot of zombies. And if you count, there are 13 zombies in the art. I've counted before. It's true. Cleansing Nova. Is this pretty? Yeah. Three white, white. So our creatures or destroy our artifacts and enchantments. So for one more, I can have a steer command, but I don't have an extra one. I've got this. I'm playing this. Conqueror's Pledge! She looks like Elsa a little bit. Kind of. The dress is similar. Well, it really looks like Elsa. Yep. Two triple white, kicker six. So if I pay 11, I get 12 one, one white soldier creature tokens. If I only pay 5, I get 6 one, one white creature, soldier creature so you tokens. So have Elsa in the deck. She's not really Elsa. Well, she looks like Elsa. Just because she looks like it. You look like Emma, but you're not really Emma. Yes, I am. How do you know? Because I just know. Go ask Max. Council of Judgment. One white white. Emma. Starting with me. Everybody votes for if Guinea hates voting, so he's going to hate this card, but that's fine. Starting with you, each player votes for a Nanland permanent you don't control. Exile each permanent with most votes retired from the most votes. Our ruling is final. Damn! It's foil. Yeah, I don't have Wrath of God in here. I don't have Damnation here. I have both of them in the one card. Cation Town. Um... I just like the art. I like the art a lot. This is not going to make the final cut because it's not very efficient and I need to make cuts. So this will come out, but look at the art. Isn't it beautiful? Fallen Empires. People now, of course, you know, Fallen Empires is crap, but back in 1995, that's what we had and we were looking forward to it and we had fun with it because we had nothing else. Couldn't find Arabian Nights cards, couldn't find Legend cards, couldn't find Antiquities cards. You could find The Dark, Revised, and Fallen Apart. That's it. That's how you play Magic until Ice Age came out. So six, you get four 1-1 one, one white citizens. Not the best. Especially not when there's Spectral Procession. For three, you get three 1-1 one, one white flyers. So for six, you get four 1-1 one, one ground pounders. Or for three, you get three flyers. Mmm, the Spectre Procession is better. But again, it might not. So you probably heard of my voice. I was trying to burn through it. I was trying to get through it. I was trying to go. This is the last card. Vindicate. If it's now going longer than 10 seconds, but. So I've got to splice three of these together, and one of them is only going to be about a minute. Vindicate. Destroy target permanent. One, one black, one white. Sorcery. And that's the deck. Well, I, I guess since I... <laughs> since I have to go through this, I might as well start putting these away. Okay, there's artifacts. Artifact. I'll put the lands with the land. He's white. That's going to be Dictate Erebos once I get, uh, take Dictate away from Edgar. Okay, so... Arcane Signet. And then Masquid Nexus. And then Orzhov Signet. And then... Where is it? Skull Clamp, Soul Ring, Talisman Hierarchy. Put Tasa here. I only have one, two, three, four mana rocks. Maybe I should get another mana rock. Maybe I don't have enough. Anyway, I've got to make some cuts, so... Since you're here, and since I had to restart this anyway, so Grave Titan goes here. Seal of Cleansing. And this will be foil. When I build the final deck, it'll be foil. I already ordered one from uh, Cherny Retige. I can't believe I made the mistake and <laughs> ordered a flat copy. Why the hell did I do that? Okay. Dictate of Hilliard. 
Iliad God of the Sun goes to the legendaries. Grave Pack, but that's going to be Dictate of Erebos. So I'll just I'll put it in order. Screw it. And Weathered Wayfarer. Alright, so let's take a look. So, lands. I always go either 37 or 38 lands with uh, Tesa. She, uh, she, well, she can't really read yet, so yeah, she's built them. Tesa. Um, probably go 38 lands. Depending on which ones I get, which the other ones that I want that I get. Let's just take a look. False Knots, Adler's Caves of Coilos. City of Shadow. So I've got, and this got out of order. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I've got 11 non basics. The basics. Uh, it doesn't matter, I'll count those later. So, there will be these 11 non basics plus 27 basics at this point if I do anything else. So, with Tesa, Ors of Cyan, in the lands, let's say that's 31 cards. So, I have room for 61 cards. There are five cards inbound. One of them, Soul Bonds, I probably will not use if I use Masquid Nexus. Um, Rutling Reanimator will definitely go in. He's two and a black for a 2 2 zombie cleric. When he or another cleric dies, I get a 2 2 black zombie creature token. Ethereal Absolution will definitely go in. That costs four, one black, one white. It's an enchantment. Um, your creatures get plus one, plus one. Your opponent's creatures get neg one, neg one. So it's Zealous Persecution stapled to a token maker. So the other ability it has is you spend four, two colors, one black and white, exile a card from target player's graveyard. If it was a creature, you get a 1-1 one, one black and white spirit. So it makes black white spirits. So add a benefit. That will definitely go in. Uh, what else did I have inbound? Mentor the Meek. Maybe that won't go in now. It depends on how many draw engines I have. I've got Skull Clamp now. Um, I had another dry engine in here that I can't quite remember right now. So, Mentor the Meek, uh, an alternate art version. So that's three. Soul Bonds, Spirit Bonds. Spirit Bonds I might not use. And I can't remember the fifth card offhand. So anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15. 19, 20, So I need to cut six cards as it is, and I have at least three more cards coming in that are going to be very good for the deck. So I need to cut nine cards. Let's make a first pass. So I don't have a whole lot of things that trigger when they come into play. So let's cut this card. So if she gets cut, Met to the Make is definitely going to need to be in there. So let's cut Kea. That's one. So I'm down, I need eight more cuts. <sighs> I don't want to cut her. Let's see how it goes. Cut that because it's cheating. It, it feels like cheating, it feels too dirty. Taste is going to be a prog deck. If it were our Scrooge yeah, that would go in, but this deck is not good enough for Astrusiona. Sack two creatures, your turn target. Mm, this might get cut later. Whisper might get cut later. I just like him. Let's see, 
her. I already talked about her. Her angel, let's drop her. So, the Gastronomer Monk actually works pretty good with Kea. But, I don't have it, so it's basically, let's take a look. What do I have for creatures that have a come into play ability? Um, this dies, no, 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 nope, 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 nope. Yeah, one, two, three. Four. Five. Six. So as it stands, I only have six creatures with a come into play ability, so only six targets for and I've gotta cut something, so I might as well cut Kaya. What have I cut so far? That's four. So I need five more cuts. Hmm. How much devotion to black am I really going to build? He's not a cleric. The deck is more white than black. So let's cut him. So that's five cards as my wife and my daughter start arguing with each other. So you need to cut four more. Maybe. Need to cut four more. Let's cut the anointed procession because even though it's good, it doesn't do anything else. Maybe I should cut the dictate of Hiliod. Actually, so if I have Heliod, but not his dictate, and I have dictate of Erebo Erebos, but not Erebos, there's kind of some balance there. And all it does is gives my creatures plus, and I've got other ways of giving them plus plus, so let's take that out for now. Fanatical Devotion, uh, still not sure. Fuel of Souls, really not sure how much this is going to trigger. Open the Graves, but whenever an Untoker creature creature dies, again, maybe I don't need that. Let's see, take out Acacian Town. So, with this, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight cuts right there. And I need to cut one more. Let's get a, something for the thumbnail. I guess that's good enough. So that's eight. Need to cut one more. Or just not put in a card that's inbound. Let's make sure. Well, anyway, this is going long. I don't have the other cards yet. Uh, let me cut it off there. Let me cut it off there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think I should cut? What do you think I should keep? If you think <coughs> any of these cards are better than uh, some of the things I'm keeping in the deck. And let's get the post. Hey, I managed to get up to 11 minutes. Yeah, boy.